Hello everyone, Chaos here, and welcome to another old-school RuneScape video. Today, my Fosani's Nightmare Guide. The Fosani's Nightmare is a solo version of the Nightmare of Ashihama, a group of boss located in Mauritania, added in early 2020. This boss has pretty cool lore behind it, and the summary is that it was summoned by shamans, they realized it was a bad idea, and created four pillars to destroy it, but were sat down before doing so. The siren near the arena named Shora came to sleep to recover the pillars so the nightmare stops plaguing Ashihama's dreams. This boss is mainly done for combat achievements since a loot is not really worth the effort for fighting one of RuneScape's most intricate bosses. Scapers, if you enjoyed this video you would help me out tremendously by hitting the subscribe button and dropping a like for the YouTube overlords. We are aiming for 100k this year and you can join our Discord with the link in the description. The only real requirement you need to fight the Fosani's Nightmare is the quest to Priest and Peril for access to Mauritania. Other than that, you don't even need 1k C for the regular Nightmare, as the game will just advise you to fight the group variant first, but it's not really locked behind it unlike the Corrupted Gauntlet for example, which does require at least one regular Gauntlet KC. Other than this, I recommend the quest A Kingdom Divided for Thralls, A Taste of Hope for the Dracon's Medallion, Ghost Ahoy for the Ectophile, and a Partial Completion of Fairy Tale Part 2 for access to Fairy Rings. These three are just recommended to get to the Nightmare, which we will see later on. While the group variant of the Nightmare can be fought with lower stats since you will have more people with you, the Fosani's Nightmare does not mess around. I suggest not even trying this boss if you're not at least 85 in each combat style, excluding ranged, and you will need a high agility level because of the path to this boss is absolutely miserable. To farm it properly for combat achievements, the Sleepy Tablet, or if you're demented enough to hunt for the pet, Bump those levels up to 95 to have the best chance of slaying the Nightmare. As always, I will show you three setups to fight this boss. We are going to start with minimum gear, but be advised that if this is all you can afford, I highly recommend doing it either in a group or just a few Fosani kills to test the boss. You are seeing it on screen right now, consisting of Nezi Helm, Fury, Fire Cape, Torso and Obsidian Legs, Barrow's Gloves with Dragon Boots, and to top it all off we have a Zami Hasta with a Dragon Defender. Your inventory will consist of basic mage gear like Aram and the Trident, boosting potions, sound fuse, and finally a blowpipe. We will go over how each of these items play a role in the fight later. After you make a bit more cash, the setup is going to receive almost an entire revamp consisting of a face guard with bandos, ferocious gloves, and an abyssal bludgeon. Statistically speaking, a mythical cape is better because of the crush bonus, so you can leave the fire cape in the bank. If you have even more money, your next upgrades will be towards the mage switches, and get yourself a Sanguinesti Staff and Virtue pieces. Once you have these, an Imbued Heart will help out during the Paler phase. Finally, once you are a wealthy Giga Chad, almost the entire setup will change once again. In order of importance, get yourself a Scythe, Inquisitor's Armor, Ancestral, a Shadow, a Void Waker, a Crossbow or Web Weaver Bow, a Ham Joint or Swift Blade, and a Saturated Heart. You can get to the rest of the items in whatever order you want. For all three of the setups, you also have to make room for a rune pouch to summon thralls, and of course your Book of the Dead. If you have any questions when it comes to upgrades, feel free to join our Discord for help. Up next I will have a little segment on how to get there, because reaching this boss is almost as bad as the Dagonoth Kings. Once you get the Sleepy Tablet and use it on your Dracon's Medallion, you may teleport a few steps away from the temple where the Nightmare is. Prior to that, your best bet is to use the medallion to go to Vershenaza and running north. You can also use the Ectophile to teleport north of Port Vesmatis and run south, or use the Fairy Ring code ALQ to then run southeast. All of these will eventually lead you to a town called Sleep, in which you have to go down the stairs in one of the buildings. And then, the road will naturally take you to the boss. To fight the Fosani's Nightmare, you will have to go a little deeper and click on the vessel next to an NPC, which will hold your items if you die in this instance. We have no Nightmare-specific plugins, so go ahead and activate any PVM plugin you typically use, such as NPC indicators, monster HP percentage, and more. The best plugin for this boss, especially when you start learning, is called Screen Markers. This will help during the Prayer Shuffle special attack, so you can color protection prayers to tell you what to pray next when they get swapped around. You can see how it works in my plugins video. Okay, fellas, this is all the information you need to prepare for the Nightmare, but this fight is so convoluted that I am going to do something new for this video. I will combine the mechanics and the live KC example to go over every single attack and the mechanic performed by the Nightmare in greater detail. I will provide commentary during most of the KC, 
and when we see a new action, I will tell you exactly how to deal with each one. First of all, the entire fight will go on for 4 phases. Nothing I'm about to tell you changes for the first 3, and when we go into the 4th one, I will tell you the adjustments you need to make. Throughout the KC, the Nightmare will hit you with 3 basic attacks. The melee attack looks and sounds like this. The ranged attack looks and sounds like this. And the mage attack looks and sounds like this. During the first of three phases, the melee attack is not so common, but you have less the time to react. So I recommend playing melee the entire time, and switching to ranged and mage whenever you see their respective attack. The first of three summoning specials is Parasites. The Nightmare will stop for a few ticks, and send a little bug your way. Your HP will turn pink, which means you have to drink a dose of Sanvi. After a few seconds, the Parasite will come out, and you will need to attack it with a weapon on Crush for the max hit. Otherwise, it will heal the Nightmare or damage pillars. If you don't drink a sound view, it will have the same behavior, but deal massive damage as it's coming out of you. After the Nightmare takes 400 shield damage, the four pillars around you will activate. This is where you need to switch to your mage gear and activate your heart if you have one. And keep an eye out for the top left corner of your screen to see the progress of all four pillars, since technically you are charging them up. While doing this, all attacks will continue normally. The first of three, let's call them icon specials, is Flower Power. The arena will be divided in four quadrants, and you need to stand in one surrounded by white and pink flowers to keep attacking. If you stand on any other quadrant, not only will you take rapid damage, but you will also heal the nightmare, so movement here takes priority for the special. Flower Power is one of the two specials where yet another attack can be used. The nightmare will stay in place, summon a dark portal under her, and little portals will start spawning all around the arena. You have a few ticks to move to a safe tile, otherwise you will be hit for upwards of 65. I will show you how to avoid this attack and deal melee damage next. The second special is called the Curse, also known as Prayer Shuffle. When you see this image on the ground, the Nightmare will shuffle your prayers. Prey Mage will protect from ranged, Prey Ranged will protect from melee, and the Prey Melee will protect from mage. If you have good memory, they are shifted to the left, but this is where I personally use the Screen Markers plugin to change colors. This effect will last for 5 attacks, and when you're done, you will hear a particular sound. When all 4 pillars have been activated, the second summoning special is Sleepwalkers. They will spawn on the edges of the arena, and you will have to defeat all of them before they get to the Nightmare. For the first and second one, you can just tag them with a Blowpipe, Cross, or Webweaver Bow, and for the third and fourth one, you need to kill the last one with your ham joint. I will show you how to do this later. If you fail to slay them all, they will deal massive damage and most likely kill you. So, always prioritize these over any special. For the third and final summoning special, the Nightmare will summon two husks which won't let you move, and you will have to finish them off to avoid being hit by another attack. This is the second reason why we bring a 3-tick weapon, so equip it and finish them off as soon as possible. You will still have to deal with the Nightmare's standard attacks, and as you can see, the Portal special can also be used, but it's not going to take as long as when she's using it along flowers or mushrooms. And speaking of mushrooms, the third icon special is called Spores. The Nightmare will summon mushroom-looking things around the arena, and if you stand anywhere in their 3x3 radius, they will explode, causing you to lose prayer extremely quickly, and disabling your run for several seconds. Combined with the portal attack, this can be quite deadly, since you will have less time to get to a safe tile. Since we only have two more mechanics to cover and they happen towards the end of the kill, I will let the live recording play so you can hear what I'm thinking of, and pause once again when I need to explain something crucial. Go use a web weaver bow, careful with the sleepwalkers. Here we go, one, into two. Excellent. So far it has been a pretty decent kill. Make sure to keep your prayer I would say around 60, so that way if you get the impregnation attack, you are indeed going to be able to heal your prayer, not waste a lot of points, and just basically, have, there we go, so look, if I had prayer up like at all times, that would have definitely wasted a ton of prayer points, which is definitely useful for the entire KC. Very nice, so I'm gonna stay here, and I'm gonna do one more attack and wait for the parasite, there we go, Pray magician. And go back to the side. Excellent. I was already praying melee. So that is really good. 
No Lamborghini attack so far, which is nice. And this is where I am going to demonstrate how to do one of my favorite uh, techniques. So you see, when the shadows are fully... I will say, like, developed or grown. There we go. You walk in. Boom, dude. Easy game. Look at that. It looks so sick. And then we do this. Watch out. Where's my Thrall? You can go ahead and put Augury on for the pillars. The final special attack is called Surge, also known as the Lambo. The Nightmare will teleport to one of the edges of the arena, and after a few ticks, she will dash to the walls she's facing. Any player caught in her path will be dealt upwards of 80 damage, most likely resulting in a quick death. Everything so far so good. As long as you are away from the Nightmare, you only have to worry about both Mage and Ranged. Which is very nice. Otherwise, if I am next to the Nightmare, I am also going to have to worry about Melee Prayer. But with the Mage and ranged animations, you really have nothing to worry about. That is going to be Mage, uh, mage sorry. That is the Impregnation attack once again. I am going to wait a little bit. Because I am going to be done with this one. There we go. And then I am going to wait... One of the tips that I am going to tell you is that I much rather wait for the Parasite. There we go, excellent. Doesn't matter if it damages you a little bit, because if you fail the Sleepwalkers, it is going to be extremely punishing. When you enter the fourth phase, the most important change is that the Nightmare will disable your prayer if you're protecting against the attack she is going to use. I still recommend camping protect from melee, but leaving your mouse near the icon in case she uses the attack for which you have less time to react. The other change is that the melee attack becomes a lot more common. I still recommend praying against melee because that is the one where you have to pay more attention. And the melee attack is going to become a lot more, is going to be a lot more common in this phase. There we go, where the ham joint and the husks. Watch out. There we go. Easy game so far. That is melee once again. And right now, okay, ooh, that was really close. So as you can see, the melee attacks start ramping up a whole ton. Like, a lot. I'm going to hang out around here. And because I don't really want to go into the 3x3 area of this mushroom, then I am just going to chill here, okay? And we're gonna go back to Best in Slot Mage, and I'm gonna start... killing it there. Watch out. Excellent. So far, so good. I would, I would dare say this is so far a perfect KC. But who knows. That is ranged. Maybe that's it. That's ranged once again. And where is it gonna go? Lamborghini attack, so just watch out. Okay, this one is not there yet. There we go, that is one. I believe that should be the second pillar. That is magic. The final phase is really, really weird. As you will see, first of all, I'm going to take care of these husks. Do the ranged, and then do this one. Finish off the last pillar, and you want to be really, really quick with your switches. Because once that happens, you need to be really... Uh, you need to prepare for the sleepwalkers. If just one makes it in, it's going to do a lot of damage. When you have to deal with the sleepwalkers for the fourth and final time, kill three of them with ranged and hit the last one with a melee weapon. Otherwise, the time it takes for the projectile to get to the last one won't be enough. At this point, if you let just one sleepwalker through, it will damage you for around 40, so it's not the end of the world if you don't make it. The final mechanic is the desperation phase. The nightmare will teleport to the middle of the arena and heal for 150 HP to fight for her life, and will not only summon portals underneath you, but sleepwalkers will start going towards her until either of you die. For every sleepwalker that reach her, you will take 15 damage. It is advised to save your special attack for this final part of the fight, and pray redemption in case one of those hits take you below 10% of your HP. Okay, that was probably pretty convoluted to follow. I will have two links for you in the description. One for the full uncut fight I had for this recording, and another one to one of my livestreams where I get both the perfect Fosani and speedrun Grandmaster tasks. For now, let's go over a few extra tips to maximize your success rate at the Fosani. First off, I personally summon a new Thrall for every phase of the fight to help out with the damage. You could also do it mid-phase and have them help you with the pillars, since damage will be a little more effective. When dealing with a Parasite, whatever weapon you bring will deal its maximum hit if you're using it on Crush. 
I bring a Bandos God Sword for the guaranteed hit, but you could bring a Ceridomon God Sword and use a special to guarantee a chunky HP and a prayer heal. I don't really suggest getting comfortable with this, but for some odd reason, if the Nightmare does a melee attack but you move away from her just in time, you will completely avoid the attack, but I recommend you always pray against it. For the husks, there will be times in which one of them will spawn under the Nightmare. Make sure to right-click it, otherwise you might attack the Nightmare by accident, and we need to dispose of the husks ASAP. Depending on your prior level, I recommend not going above 66% of your total level, so you're able to drink a sound view as soon as you're impregnated with a parasite. That way, you won't waste the precious prayer points. Like I said before, for phases 3 and 4 of the Sleepwalkers, I recommend wearing a melee weapon to kill the last one. And you can even use a blowpipe if you're in close proximity, so the darts can reach the target a lot quicker and avoid damage. Finally, the Sleepwalkers will always spawn next to the pillars, so you can have your mouse at the ready for a quick reaction. This is a lot better during the final phase where a sleepwalker will appear next to each of the pillars. Like I said at the beginning of the video, if you're here to make money, you are absolutely in the wrong place. Not only are the Nightmare Uniques a lot less common than other bosses, but thanks to new additions throughout the years, her drops have lost a lot of value, but this is what we're looking at. We have the Nightmare Staff, three different orbs which you can attach to the staff for additional benefits when using them in combat with the Mage style, and the three pieces of the Inquisitor armor set along with the Inquisitor's Mace, which is the best one-handed crush weapon in the game. The Sleepy Tablet with a drop of 1 in 100 will be a guaranteed drop on your KC number 100. The Parasitic Egg can be used on the pet to give it a transmog option for it to look like the Parasite, a Jar of Dreams, and finally an Elite Clue Scroll at a rate of 1 in 35. This is a boss I would say you absolutely do not do for the money, as the wiki lists the Nightmare as one of the top tier money making methods granted you get a unique. If you don't get one though, literally almost all of our drops are pure garbage, and things you won't even pick up at the end of the kill, like Ceridum and Bruce or Bass. I cannot stress this enough, you only do this boss for the combat achievements, and if money is not an issue for you anymore. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached the end of the video, thank you so much for coming and for making it this far. If you did, let me know what you think of the Nightmare in the comments, or if you have already experienced this fight. If you do, include the term RSN in your comment, and you will be entered in our weekly bond giveaway for which I will pick a winner on Friday. A massive thank you to all the legends that have decided to support this channel monetarily. Your contribution goes a long way for a family in a third world country. If you want to be part of this list of legends, click the join button below to see all the cool perks you can get in the videos, in the live streams, and of course, in the Discord. In the next one! Well, I, once again, I don't know what I'll be uploading since I am working on a few ideas at once, but I can guarantee it will be a banger. For now, I hope you have an amazing day, have an amazing week, and I will see you then. Ba -ba -ba -ba. Peace!